So this is Tech Stacks Rewind. Am I right, guys? That is Rewind. Today. Rewind. Yeah, and these are the fan show guys. It's us. So everybody just introduce themselves, as you sometimes do. Uh, I'm Matt Browning. And you're optimistic or pessimistic? I'm a realist. Okay. I'm right in the middle. In the middle. Hunter Shortliff, working on my optimism this week. Yeah. I'm Kelly Adams, and I'm an optimist, and that's okay. And I don't know what I am. I, I changed. You're an optimist. Uh, you have to be, though. Or you wouldn't be good. At, the show wouldn't be very sometimes good. Sometimes I'm optimistic. This show, if you were totally pessimistic all the time, your show would be terrible. Well, I'm a... T- when that make I'm a Jim Texas Rome? fan, and yeah, you're, and I'm pessimistic about everything that they yeah, do. Yeah, but you're but, but you're not covering te- the Texans yeah. here. Good things. All right, hey, on the show today on Texas Rewind, we're discussing the Go Hour keys to taking down those hogs. Also, Stephen McGee breaks down the new quarterback, uh, the new quarterback. Well, QB one, Max Johnson was the new one last week. This week, second week in the system. We'll talk about that. Uh, we had Ryan Swope on the show. How do we get separation for those wide receivers? They got to get that. Maybe uh, we're gonna get a little bit of that was uh, number one out there. And of course, these gentlemen, the fan show guys. That's next here on Texas Rewind. Cool. I'm saying right now I'd pick Arkansas. I would say uh, it would make sense. I'm not saying A&M can't win the football game. They're just just saying they're gonna. Ha- the potential is there, but they're gonna have to start. The potential's been there all year, mm-hmm. so it's time to figure. You know, to to put potential aside and start turning it into production. You're a month into this now. Yeah. The whole we're this close to making plays doesn't fly anymore in a month if you you say hey we got to clean up some things well you know what i got to clean my garage if i don't get it clean in a after a month it's probably not going to get clean you're right about that so it's been a month clean it up or because now you're almost to the point where you're saying we're mid-season form you're gonna be a third of the way through the season now and i'm talking about and then you had all august clean it up or it's not going to get clean because the competition's not going to get any easier no, no. I mean, this next three weeks is ridiculous. So, it, yeah, it's just time to stop talking about what you need to do and do it. Now, do that, do it, and I think A&M could have a blow, blowout game, a, bl- a breakout game, not blow them out, but a breakout game where you see the offense start being what you expected it to be with A-Chain and Anias and Evan Stewart and maybe Donovan Green getting involved and, and all those things and, and Bryce Foster's back and I could see it finally come together. Because the potential is there, but you got to turn that potential into production. What's the old line that every coach likes to say about potential? Right. Means you haven't done it yet. Yeah, you're right. And, and to me, it all goes back to I say about the big plays, right? But to me, it's about the offensive line. If the offensive line gives you time to protect and run, then you can do these things that I think that this offense is capable of doing. The offensive and. And that takes time. I don't know why it takes so much time. I try to ask John Harris. Like, it takes time to, to work itself out. There's no more time. Yeah, You're how out. much time? How much time? So I haven't made my decision yet because I, have, I, I feel like I'm finding reasons to say A&M could, will win this game. But all, the, all the, the proof, all the history this season says, no, Arkansas is a better team. Yeah, I would just always ask. And look, I get it. I hope A&M wins. I want A&M to win. Everybody knows that. If you, but I always put it to this, based on what you've seen, if you were, I don't want to even stock in points, just team win-lose. If, and I'm talking to everybody listening. If you had to put your paycheck on this game. I'd probably put it on Arkansas right who now. Who would you put it on, based on what you've seen? But I also know that Jimbo Fisher has game plan for these kind of games before. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, some of the, the toughest games that they're supposed to get blown out. Now, I know they didn't beat Clemson. But that was a pretty darn good uh, game. The, the Alabama game, obviously, was Zach Calzada struggling throughout that season, and then he comes in and does a great job in that game. I do believe that Jimbo gets up for these games, and you know, I think Billy went through some of his, his victories against top 15 teams since he's been here. This guy can do it. Oh, it's going to be a competitive football game. Yeah, you know, it starts with me just running the system, getting the team out of the huddle. It, not as not near as sloppy pre-snap uh, eliminating stupid penalties delays the game time i mean those are the big things you know a quarterback's uh in control and in command when when you're able to to largely eliminate that uh you know the second thing is i thought he showed a lot of poise in there we know the kid's tough he's got a lot of compete in him and you know he's, he's going to take hits with this offensive line like that's just going to be a matter uh that's just going to be the job in the job description for him I, it's not an easy, easy uh, position to be in, certainly. And last week he got dealt a, a tough hand. Miami, he was 
had some some pretty good DBs on the back end that were able to challenge us. And I think that's going to be uh, where I'm interested to, to see these freshmen kind of inject some life is we've talked in years past about how this wide receiver group has kind of struggled versus, you know, kind of being able to separate in man-to-man coverage. And, and last week, I think that kind of showed up again. When you don't have a guy that's that big, physical, speedy wide receiver like an Evan Stewart, potentially Chris Marshall, like that's, that hurts, that hurts you as a quarterback. And then um, I thought he did a great job of just handling that and pocket presence, getting the ball out of time. He knows where his, his safety valve is. I really liked what I saw from Max. I think it was a, a clear step up in, at the quarterback position. It's not, it's not a slide against Haynes, but some of the throws he made were, were extremely elite. The accuracy, the anticipation, um, I, I thought it was a great first week. Now he's got to get better. We've got to take some shots and, 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 get some explosive plays who got it done this past weekend man i'm gonna go with our with our defense um you know i think our pass rush has been phenomenal i'm gonna go with that aggie defense uh and i think that we continue to do that uh, put pressure on the quarterback i think that you know uh, we're going to be in a good situation uh, and hopefully we don't have to rely on them too much but that you know they've been they've been our bread and butter and they've been the most consistent. So I'm going with our Aggie defense. And uh, who who didn't get it done? Excuse me, not won't, but who didn't get it done? Oh, well, I mean, I think we already talked about it, but I'm not going to say anybody in particular. But I think our receiving core didn't get it done, um, which you know, unfortunately, I hate saying that. Uh, but uh, I think you know this week's a new week, and hopefully, we, we you know. Instead of having four catches, we can, you know, have 10 different players with four catches. So um, I just really hope we see see a change there. And who's going to get it done, Ryan? Man, who is going to get it done? I'm going number zero. I think uh, this is his team, and I think he uh, he's probably got a bad taste in his mouth. So, uh, I, you know. I think Anais is going to show up this this game and have a, have a big one. Sometimes I feel like we like look at this game with so much anger because of what happened last year, where a team really just punched A and M in the mouth. Do you think the current guys think of it the same way? Like fans and media are, are looking at it, like this is going to be a, a fist fight, and they better bring it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's one of those games you go up and, and um, I think that there's definitely some history here of just being a great football game year in year out so i think that those guys have that mentality and they you know they hadn't hadn't forgotten about that and it's definitely going to give them a chip on the shoulder to go in there and, and man we just need to start fast I and mean, that's our biggest thing i think as an offensive player that was always something that i was always trying to promote the you know, younger guys and, and then our coaches were promoting that you got to put your foot on the gas and, and you got to set the tone early. That kind of, and that, that kind of dictates the football game. And, and it, I, I just, I just frustrating. Yeah. 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 I think we're all waiting for that moment. Like, Oh, here's the offense, except it goes a long, it's been a long time, but I'm not, I'm not down. I mean, happy. We, I'm glad we beat Miami that you talk about a bad week. Oh yeah, that would have been. Yeah, this, I mean, you're you're there. This we're all moping around. Right? Can you imagine that so, if that Anias muff punt ended up with Miami ball? Oh, like thank you, Anias, for being great at what you do and getting the ball back. But that that would have it would have been over this week. Two I mean, point conversion would have been coming. Oh. Been ooh, no, they come wouldn't on. have gotten it. No. They wouldn't have gotten it. Not they would have dropped knee. the ball or something. You know. I mean, let's face fact, Miami. I want. I just want to be honest about it. Miami didn't look very good. No, they, they don't look like they were very good. They really did. But did we make them not look good? I'm not sure that's the case. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I mean, if you really want my honest opinion, I don't think so. I just think they're not. What I don't good. know on that subject is they had guys receivers running open. Now we had the guys that should have been covering them standing on the sideline. So did they look good because the guys that should have been covering them were standing on the sideline? Whether it was suspension I I or. 
I, um, I saw it that way. I don't think they're guys. I think that we had tight coverage. Yeah, I mean, people yeah. jumping in front of balls, slapping balls I mean, down. We made, it, we made it hard on on their uh, on their offense. Two I mean, guys, there were guys that were. I mean, but you they lose, dropped a few that were. They, you they lose Brian George too. and you lose Demonte. That's what I'm saying. That like, quick, and then that last that last the last two possessions on defense. Antonio Johnson wasn't in the game. Right? Was he on like? Concussion, concussion, I'm guessing. Or yeah. He took a hit. So, I mean, he was standing over there, looked fine, but he wasn't in the game. You're, you're talking about three of your top guys in the secondary, and yes. we still held them. Held them there was a couple guys in in the fourth quarter that I'm not sure have played a snap all year. I guess they have. I haven't gone back and looked at the film, but I don't recall them playing a snap this year, and they were in the game in the fourth quarter. Well, what, what I'll say about all that is there are some issues that I see with the defense, but some of that might be by design. They're they're not getting to the quarterback, though, and that's something that has mm-hmm. to change, and yeah. you can run on this defense, but I feel like against a team like Arkansas that you know they're going to run a lot, I think you allow the, that secondary to play the way they've been playing, stack the box or put more people, more pressure yeah. that way because yeah. I, I trust that that secondary can get the job done against an Arkansas team that I haven't seen a legitimate deep threat on that team yet. Right. Yep, yep. Um, and how do they beat you? KJ Jefferson getting loose and the running game. Yeah, that's exactly it. So, I mean, I, I agree hundred percent. I think dude can just, throw, he can throw bombs. So, all right, guys, I think we all know what to do. Kelly started off like subscribe, share, comment and, and comment. Oh. And, um, let's see. I know Nolan's watching the end of this video, but I wonder if the other guys are, if you are, tell me you're watching at the very end of this video, Matt's going to give us a word of the day for you to type on the comment section for the person who listens to this to the very end. Are uh, you ready? What's the word? Block. B L O C K. That's it. And you, we want to see some, that's blocking. the key to this game yeah, this we week. Want we want to see some blocking. Just one word block, put it Just on block. There. At least three people will do it. Maybe nine. 